Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and this is day 13 of my book Kareem. Let's get going. This is probably like the unluckiest number ever. 13, if you know, you know. You know, finding the 13, bad luck, all that stuff. <laughs> but it's a good thing it's not a Friday. I think. I don't know. But, so out of curiosity, I had to check and today is Friday the 13th. <laughs> Oh my god, what are the odds I had to choose this topic to talk about? Oh, I did not plan this way, I promise. But, happy Friday the 13th everyone, bad luck is about to begin. So, in this one we're going to be talking about my paranormal experiences, because I did have some, and honestly, I don't know what to make of it, I think Two of them were really real to me, is what I can say about it. The other one, it might be real, but I still need proof. I need proof that it is real. So, let's start off with number one. And that is a voice in the dark. So, oh boy. I remember when I was little, I remember that it was like late in the night time. We were sleeping, my parents were sleeping, I was sleeping, my sister was sleeping. Uh, we had our each of the bedrooms, so my, you know, my parents were sharing one with the master bed. I had my own, my sister had her own, so I think this was like around midnight or something like that. Because I remember being very, very late in the night, so sometime midnight and onwards. So what happened there was... I was sleeping, you know, having a good time because I like my sleep. And then all of a sudden, I heard a voice. A voice that quite literally called my name. So, obviously, I got up and was like looking around, wondering who the hell whispered my name. It wasn't my parents because this is my room and my parents' room is across the hallway. And my sister's room is like right next to my you know, like the wall that separates my bedroom and hers. So, I was just kind of freaking out because, like, who, who had called my name? I, like, cannot meet my parents at all. I don't think I ever mentioned this story at all to my parents. Only to my friends, but to my parents, I don't think I ever mentioned this. So, even to this day, I'm still like, who, I still don't know who called my name. So, obviously, I think I creeped out and I just didn't know what to do, so I just went back to sleep is what I remembered. And, um, yeah, the next day is just pretty much back to normal kind of thing. I kind of forgot what happened in the nighttime, but I still remember that whisper. It really called my name, Anna. Like, it really called my name in a whisper, too, so. That just kind of creeped me out, and I still have no idea who called me up to this day. Number two, the most classic thing you can ever do for, for giggles, <laughs> and that is doing the Bloody Mary. I have done it, I have been there, I have been stupid, but my friend and I, this happened when I was like in grade 3 maybe? I know, we're so smart. So. My friend and I, we decided to do Bloody Mary. This happened during my lunchtime recess because we were in school at that time. So, you know, we were in grade three-ish. So I remember we went outside. We kind of did the summoning, if you will, a little bit different. It's because my friend had a crystal. Like, it, it kind of looked real at the same time, so we weren't sure about it. Wow, so, so smart. But basically, we went outside, we held the crystal, and we called her name three times. And then, we spun around. So then, after lunchtime, we went to class, but I had a feeling, like, I don't know, it's just like a kind of an inkling feeling. Something told me to just look up, look across the hallway, because across the hallway, we had windows that we could see outside. So I looked across the hallway and I looked at the window and there it was. It was like a black shadowy figure with red eyes just falling down by the window. So 
at first I thought I imagined it, so like there's no way that that actually came when they summoned her. So like, who is she? I don't know. I don't think I will ever find out, but I remember clearly seeing a black shadowy figure with red eyes. I can't you not. It had legit red eyes and it was just floating like going down the window just like that. It was just like flying down. So if that was her, I don't know, but I don't remember that figure very distinctly. So to this day, I still don't know what happened there. <laughs> Number three, this has got to be like the most common thing anyone can experience. I'm pretty sure anyone can experience this. Whether you believe it or not, that's on you, that's okay. So, I mean, it was like really in broad daylight, I think like 9, 10 a.m. in the morning. So I remember I was in the bathroom washing my teeth. I think I had just ate breakfast. So I'm just washing my teeth and then, you know, doing bathroom stuff. And then I like my body kind of shivered, like not in cold, but like a shiver, you know, like, you know, those kind of shiver in my feel, shiver down my spine kind of thing. And so I remember looking at the mirror and at the mirror, I saw a finger, like a cloaked finger that, that only had a cloak. It covered its face. I couldn't see its face. It had nothing. So I was just staring at the mirror, watching the finger coming closer and closer. And it was just like a brown cloaked finger. Like the cloak was brown. That's all I can remember so vividly. Like it's still stuck in my head to, to this day. So I just remember just coming closer and closer until I, I'm like, I can't do this anymore. So I looked behind me, nothing was there. And number four, this has probably got to be my most recent one. Uh, I still remember this, oh my god. I think I know who it is, but I'm not sure. But basically what happened, I think this happened sometime last year, maybe two years ago. So it's still pretty recent. So I remember I was in my room doing something on my laptop and then I had my mom calling. So I'm like, okay, let's see what she wants from me. So my mom asked me any questions while I was standing in the hallway. So this is the hallway. Remember, I am upstairs still. still. So I was kind of yelling down the stairs. So this is the hallway, this is me, my mom's and my dad's bedroom is right here, this is mine, and this is my sister's. So I was right here, right in the middle of the hallway. And then over here are the stairs to go down, that, to, to go downstairs. So after my mom asked me a question, she went away and then again I had this feeling I don't know what it was, but I remember something t like something tugging me, like a feeling, like, hey, look look to the left. So I looked to the left, I kind of stared at my parents' window for like maybe a minute, m maybe like literally a minute, and there it was. I can't you not, I saw it. I saw it. I'm getting goosebumps. So, so I saw it, and then there on my parents' window, was another cloaked figure, but this one wasn't brown. It was a, it had a black cloak, and it kind of blended in with the shadows of my parents' bedroom. But I was still able to see it because outside there were still like street lamps and lights from the other neighbors' houses, you know, things like that. So I was able to see it, and then it would it was a shadowy figure, and it was just walking like just floating across the window and I just had to stood there staring at it and like even though it was gone and I was kind of thinking in my head what the hell was that like all my dad my sister my mom they were all downstairs it could have not been anyone else I was the only one upstairs and there's no way my shadow could have reached that far that just not it's not possible so I might have an idea of who it is. It could have been my grandparents, even though they passed away in 2014. On my dad's parent, on my dad's side. I think it's them. I don't know, but I think it's them. 
And so, but um, yeah, but like with the shadowy thing, I just wasn't scared of it. I was, you know, I was just really curious as to what it was. So I remember just standing in the hallway, just looking at the window, but nothing came out after that. But one thing to note is that when I went back to the room, I had like this stuffed animal that's an owl. It was facing just like this, but when I went back to the room, the owl, it turned the opposite side. So it was facing like this. It was facing the wall instead of my... It was facing the radio instead of facing the wall. I had no idea who had done that. Could it be from the shadow I saw? Maybe. I don't know. But I don't remember just being so stunned. I really thought it was my sister at first. But it wasn't my sister, so I don't know how could that owl just turn by itself just like that. Number five, and this is my last one. So I think this also came about two years ago, so almost the same time as when I saw that shadowy figure at my parents' window. I should mention this happened at the same time around October at the week of Halloween. So, even the ghosts have humor. <laughs> so, I should also point that my house is not haunted. Or, I should mention my parents' house is not haunted. So, 1995 was when it was built and the house is not haunted. So, I don't know where all these paranormal experiences are coming from. I do have an idea, it could be because I played Bloody Mary when I was a kid and just long me throughout. It could be from there, but I don't know. But what happened was, I was, again, in the bathroom. You see the pattern? I was in the bathroom and then doing some stuff and I think I was getting ready, getting ready for bed. And then, there it was. So, the first time, I had footsteps climbing up the stairs. Do, 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 do. So, the first time, that was actually my sister. So, that was my sister at first because I heard a voice when the from the closed door, so I knew it was my sister. So then she went, she probably went to do something in her room, and then I heard her going down the stairs again. So a few minutes later, I'm still in the bathroom. Again, I heard the first steps. Do -do 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 -do. So then I'm like, okay, my sister's really forgetful. I thought I would just poke fun at her, like, hey, you really got old? You know, kind of sibling uh, teasing. <laughs> If you have a sister, you know what I'm talking about, but... So I opened the door. No one was there. Obviously, I was kind of freaked out just because of that. But no one was freaked out. Like, no one, like there was just no one there. So I'm like, okay, who the hell came up the stairs? I don't know who it was. Like, my dad and my sister were all downstairs. My mom was in Europe at this time, visiting her family. So, uh, I have no idea who climbed up the stairs. And lastly, number six, I still remember up to this day. I don't know what it was. I remember being downstairs in the kitchen with my sister. I think we were eating dinner. And at that time, my... I believe my dad was picking up my mom from the airport or something like that. Because I remember it was just me and my sister. My dad went somewhere. But I do remember that it was cold, it was raining, thunder, and lightning. What could go wrong? Well, because it was just my sister and I, we were talking and doing some things. And then right there, the thunder, boom, the lightning, flash. And that's when I saw it. We have like this a little hallway. So imagine my bookshelf as a hallway. But then we have like this small island that kind of separates that hallway. So kind of one of those counter top islands. So this is the counter island and then we have like this little edge of the counter. And this is the hallway. The hallway that goes to the garage, the bathroom, and then we have the computer room. So right here is when that it was when it happened. I looked up, but it was super fast. In the blink of an eye, I was able to spot it. It was a black shadowy figure that just ran 
and it was hi probably hiding right at this edge of the counter. So obviously I had to look at it. I'm like, okay, I think my eyes were playing tricks on me. So with that said, I even like I also told my sister. She also stopped what she was doing and she was looking at the same direction. So we did went together. So I remember getting up from the table or from the chair and I remember just like slowly walking up to it and then I looked over the edge and nothing was there. <sighs> so, and that concludes my paranormal experiences. I don't know what to make out of it to this day. Um, like I really feel like I just remember seeing all of those things, hearing all of those things. I think like the most vividest of the vivid one was the shadow in the mirror. The best description I can give you was that it looked like a Dementor from Harry Potter. I can't you not. It had the same shape, it had the same hood and the head. It looked exactly almost like a Dementor. It just didn't float, it just kind of glided. So I don't know what that was, I really don't. I don't know any of the figures I saw throughout my childhood. Um, I have literally been convincing myself I just had an overactive imagination, which does happen to kids when they're little. They do have overactive imagination. I have been living myself in it for the longest times. So, but other than that, that figure in the mirror, I think that was what made me debunk in the end. Because it was just so vivid, I just couldn't, there's just no way that was an overactive imagination. But, yeah. So, I hope you liked this video. And it's kind of different, but who knows, maybe I will have all these experiences be turned into books. I don't know, it could be fun. But, with that being said, let me know if you have any paranormal experiences. And please like, comment, subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye!